As Fifi the Magic Clown, it gave me many opportunities to perform in unique and sometimes crazy places. Uh, also, um, when the event got bigger, that meant that there was generally a contract that needed to be signed. Now, these contracts were all in favor of the person uh, or the place that I was performing for. It would be pages and pages of lingo, jingo, legal, beagle, um, telling me everything that I had to do and when I had to do it and how long I had to do it. And if by chance there was a national disaster and I didn't perform, I had to pay them because I did not keep my contract. Now, the amount that I had to pay was always horrifically more than I ever made. So thus was the day that I had contracted with Weber State to do a performance on a Saturday. Contracts make me nervous. I am the type, kind of person that likes to keep my word and stay true to it. Um, but when you're looking at, hey, I could get hit by a car or lightning could strike me or who knows what, and I'm still going to have to pay them, you know, hundreds of thousands or a couple of thousand dollars. Anyway, the day of the performance came. Danny, who I was dating at the time, gladly said that he would drive me there and help me carry in the equipment. Um, now, Weber State University now, as it's called, it was Weber State College back then, um, is a campus that is built on the side of a mountain. It is not visitor friendly or parking friendly. Uh, it's very difficult to get to certain parts of the campus. Uh, luckily, this was a Saturday, so that meant that most of the students wouldn't be there. Uh, it should be only the people coming to this event, and it was a small event. Now, the Union Building has two parts. One side is on the west side, um, it's a large building connected with a catwalk sort of to the east side. I was going to be performing on the east side. Um, I needed to know how I could get all my equipment in because having to carry three or four hundred pounds of equipment up and down steps and in and out and up and down is a joke. Um, so they made arrangements and said that I could use the west side where the trucks came in uh, to unload. There's a, a dock and a service elevator. And they said, now no one will be there, but we'll make sure that you can get in and uh, use the service elevator. It'll take you up to the top floor where you can go across uh, to the location where you'll be performing. So there won't be stairs or anything. We'll have a cart there that you can put most of your equipment on and then just pull it into the service elevator and up you go. Great. Well, we arrived. And I always like to be an hour early, especially when you've got to transport a lot of equipment and get it set up on the stage. So we got there in plenty of time. Uh, we unloaded the car and then we parked the car where they told us we had to park it. Uh, we went in, got in the service elevator. Everything was great. We had the big cart that they provided, pulled it into this great big, like the movie service elevators. And this one, you had to pull the top and the bottom together. That's the way it worked. And once you pulled those two together, then you could hit the buttons and uh, go up. Well, we got everything in, had all the animals, all the props, everything. The big cart was in there, my carts. And Danny went over, pulled it together, came over and hit the buttons. And up we went. We were chatting and laughing when all of a sudden, boom, the elevator slams to a stop. Now, you can see it's in between the floors because it's just a cement wall there and there's no windows, there's nothing. Well, no worries, right? There's an emergency button on the elevator in case of emergency button. So Danny goes over and presses it. Oh, wow, we can hear the alarm. Wah! And it's great as long as you're pressing the button, there's this loud siren horn going off. And it's funny at first and then... Nobody comes. We press it again. We press it several times in a row. No one comes. We're pressing. And finally, I run over and I'm pressing. Da, 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 da. Nothing happens. I start to panic. We're now at least 15 minutes off schedule, which means if I'm not set up and ready to perform at the exact time, I could be penalized this large amount of money. Well, Danny's 
trying to figure out what's going on. He's remaining calm. I'm starting to get very nervous. Uh, another 10 minutes goes by. It's almost a half hour before we're supposed to perform. And uh, Danny goes, I, we need to call for help. Do you want to call 911? I have my phone. Well, he hands me the phone. Of course, he didn't want to call 911. That's okay. I frantically grabbed the phone, dialed 911. I had never called 911 before. My dad was a fireman, and you didn't play with 911 unless someone was dying. Well, I figured this was an emergency because if I had to come up with a couple of thousand dollars, I'd be dead. So I dialed 911. 911 emergency, how can I help you? Hello, this is Vivi the Cloud. I'm in Weber State and we're stuck inside an elevator and I'm trying to remain calm and I know I sound like I'm a hysterical nuthead, but they can't hang up on you, thank goodness. And I'm trying to explain. I've got to, I've got to get to the show. If I don't, I'm going to get penalized and they're going to charge me lots of money and nobody's answering the alarm and I start crying. I know I was probably snorting in there too because I'm like, what's going to happen? Ma'am, what is your current location? I'm in the union building at Weber State College and we're stuck in between floors. At this time, I think the birds are cooing and the dog is barking. So it does sound like a loony bin. Danny, of course, is calm. I love Danny because he's calm. I am not. He's going over, analyzing everything, goes over to the doors on the elevator, wiggles them a little bit, slams them together. <laughs> the elevator starts up. I'm like, oh, everything's okay. We're on our way. Ma'am, stay on the line. I'm staying on the line. We get up to the very top floor. The elevator stops nice and slowly off we go and I tell the 9 -1 operator we're okay we're off everything's okay and I hang up well we run we have 10 minutes to get everything on the stage and set up that's all I'm thinking about I am going we run in there we pull everything up get it up on top of the stage normally I like to have everything set up and do a soft run through make sure everything's okay it was two minutes to we were set up and ready they announce and the show begins now I managed to pull it off I was a little bit shaken but so relieved that we made it on time and that I did not break my contract. I'm doing my little thing when all of a sudden I noted, notice at the back of the room, the doors open. It's police officers and the fire department. I try to maintain, but I know what's happening. When you call 911, they come. I'm trying to still maintain, do my little show. I'm seeing everything going on. I watch Danny go over and talk to the police officers and the firemen. They slowly, after about 10 minutes, quietly leave the, the room and shut the doors. And I am so relieved. I make the show. It's ended. Everyone has a great time. And I know. I told people for years. I bet the emergency responders play my phone emergency 911 message at their Christmas parties when a clown calls 911 and is a looney tune. Memoirs of Fifi the Magic Clown.